matters into his own hands. This week, he sued the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers for their role in the violent January 6th attack on the Capitol in the first civil suit by a state or city seeking to hold the far-right extremist groups accountable for the insurrection. They're accused of violating the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act, a Reconstruction-era law designed to protect black citizens from violence and intimidation by the KKK. And joining me now is the Attorney General of the District of Columbia, Carl Racine. Attorney General Racine, thank you very much for coming to the Sunday Good Show. Good morning, Jonathan. Good, Good morning. morning. Let, let me read you um, a statement from, um, from the uh, defendants, and I'm going to put it up here on the screen. It says, you can't file a fantasy in court, said Jonathan Mosley, who represents Zachary Rell, president of the Philadelphia Proud Boys chapter, and Kelly Meggs, an oath keeper from Florida. There were clearly violent people who assaulted police that day, but that wasn't the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers. Your reaction to that? Well, I look forward to, to meeting uh, opposing counsel in court. I think your prior guest, Neil Cadiel, as you said, had the best line of the day, uh, which is liars lie and they can't even lie in front of a mirror. Look, our case is detailed, it's specific, it's document focus, text focus, and video focus. And what it established is, is that the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, and 30 plus individuals conspired, planned, organized, and participated on an attempt to take away our freedom. They injured the District of Columbia and its Metropolitan Police Department officers. And as a result of their actions, the District of Columbia suffered injuries. And I have to tell you, Jonathan, police officers died after the event, in the case of D.C., three by suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to put up on the screen for viewers a, a portion of your of your lawsuit um, where you write in the wake of this assault, the Capitol was left in shambles with the district left to deal with the aftermath of the violent disruption to what should have been the peaceful transition of presidential power. The district seeks co compensatory, statutory and punitive relief and by filing this action intends to make clear that it will not countenance the use of violence against the district including its police officers. Well, that's exactly right. 850 Metropolitan Police Department officers went to the Capitol, buttressed the Capitol Police, of course, who were overwhelmed. Questions are being properly asked. Thank God for the January 6th committee. Thank God for Liz, uh, Liz Cheney's honesty. And thank God for their thoroughness. What we're going to do is hit these defendants where it counts. And the evidence is that when you hit defendants like these hate groups, where it counts, they scatter, they run, they're no longer able to organize hateful and violent acts like that, which occurred on January 6th. You know, um, I'm gonna, I, I should have told this control room, uh, element five, because your your lawsuit reminded me very much of the laws, the very, the successful lawsuit um, that was uh, just argued down in Charlottesville, where now they're ordered to pay the the um, folks who were part of the Unite the Right rally, um, Spencer Kessler and Cantwell and others, ordered to pay twenty six million dollars in compensatory and punitive damages. The rule, does the ruling in that case give you a uh, hope that you'll be successful in your case? Jonathan, that case was extraordinary. I want to give credit to the Integrity First for America and those exceptional lawyers who worked hard to bring justice in Charlottesville. Of course, that gives us a lot of momentum. Let me tell you, for example, what some of the defendants in the Charlottesville case had to say about that lawsuit. One defendant said and tweeted this, oh my goodness, this lawsuit bankrupted me and it's destroyed my neo-Nazi traditionalist worker party. Another defendant called the lawsuit financially crippling, totally detrimental. Another defendant said, we've got to go underground. That's what the District of Columbia's lawsuit, let me emphasize this, the only time a city or state has ever sued hate groups like this is the District of Columbia standing up for justice and the rule of law and our freedom and democracy. 
Uh, Attorney General Racine, in the, in the one minute that we have left, um, how worried are you that we could see a repeat of the insurrection on the anniversary of the insurrection? And I'm asking that question because on my ride here to the studio this morning, we go by the Capitol and I noticed tall fencing on the Capitol building itself this morning. Is that in preparation or, you know, to guard against a, a copycat uh, insurrection? Let me say a couple things about that. First, back to the lawsuit. When you sue, you seek for justice and you sue to deter future conduct. That's what we're trying to do, to make sure it never happens again. As to the security of the Capitol, Jonathan, I live here. I always walk to the Capitol. I noticed what you noticed. I don't know anything about that other than what I do monitor is the chatter online. And yes, there's a lot of chatter around doing other acts that would be violent, including at the Capitol. Uh, one more. Uh, we're, we're out of time. But i got to ask you this, since you've also said that you've seen it. I saw the high fencing on the west front of the Capitol. Is that where you saw it or did you see it on the east front? Same place, west side of the Capitol. That's, right. uh, that's where I was. I walked out really early both yesterday and today. I don't know how much time we have, Jonathan. It's always been my joy to say, please give your Aunt Gloria my best for a happy holiday season. I, I will do that, Attorney General Carr Racine. Thank you very much for coming to the Sunday show. Thank you. All right, coming up, Martin Luther King III is here to talk about